Hello, and welcome to James the Lesser Express Lane, where we get you in and out as fast as possible. You are lying in April. Heard plenty of good things about it. The rating on Netflix was pretty high, and it's dubbed, so I can watch it. I can't watch, I can't read my TV anymore. When I was, when I was younger, I could do that. Nowadays, not so much. Now, this anime is 22 episodes long. I felt that was about 10 episodes too long. Because a lot of it feels like they were padding it. Like there's one piano contest that takes like three episodes. With flashbacks and just random stuff that doesn't need to be in it. Just saying, like... You could have made that one episode. And while it tries to pull on the heartstrings... It's like, oh, this is so sad. Like, no joke. They will literally sit there, sad face, and go, wow, this is really sad. Like, yeah. Like, with the music and what's going on and with the looks on the faces, you don't need to say, this is so sad. It was just. It was stuff like that that just kind of ruined it, or they'd go into, like, the chibi mode. No yelling at each other, and then next up, then like the next scene, be saying, "Oh, it's supposed to be really sad." Like the disconnect here and there, in a couple episodes again, cut out like ten episodes, make it twelve episodes, so you don't need to pad it out. You don't need to have one kind of take up three episodes with a lot of flashbacks and other filler. Just saying. But on the good parts, the series protagonist Kosai Rima, he's a prodigy. He plays the piano. Perfectly. When, like, say, the Philharmonic and the other, like, European-style orchestras play, they'll add something. They'll take away something. They'll draw out this note longer than what the sheet music says. They'll get louder here and then quieter there, even though, like, the original composer didn't call for that. In Asia, I've looked this up, kind of fascinated by it, they're considered less talented because they play the music exactly as it's written. They don't add character to it. They don't add flavor to it. Well, Kosai was one of those people that his mom, no, oh, you played those last two notes too fast. Whap them on the hand. Oh, you didn't play that note long enough. Backhand him. Like, yeah, she can beat the shit out of this kid. Like his childhood friend would come over. Oh, you want to play ball? No, I, I, I can't. I, I fell down the stairs again. It's like, ee, yikes. But he's a very talented piano player. Until his mom dies. She had, I'm guessing cancer. They don't really say what it was. Just that she was going downhill for a while. Went to the machines. But still strong enough to backhand him. How that happens, like when he tries to play, all I can think of is his mom. Just like how traumatized he is by everything. And like, I, I can't hear the notes. I can't hear the notes. Like, even as he's playing, he just, like, he goes tone deaf, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. And then, he meets a beautiful, talented violin player. She is just amazing. Kaori is full of life, full of spark, loves music. And she is willing, no, to not play the exact note. She's willing to take a more European style of music and add flavor to it. Speed up here, slow down there. Jump around a little bit on stage to add entertainment value to the song. Which is obviously in complete and total conflict from what he usually plays and how he usually does it. But he starts crushing on her and she starts crushing on him even though later on she starts dating, dating his best friend, although they don't really do much because she's too focused on certain competitions and getting better and having the protagonist Kosai play with her. Like, there's actually like two different love triangles in a series that didn't even need one. Again, they, I think they added both of them just to pad out the series and add more drama and a show that doesn't need more drama. Like, they try to pull on your heartstrings, but then 
oh, hey, here's an entire filler episode with nothing related to anything else going on. Just a bunch of flashbacks and stuff. It's like, why? Again, cut out 10 episodes, cut it down to 12, cut out the filler. Easily a 9 out of 10. And the music, being a show based around music, is fantastic. Like, they use music so well in this. But then it's like, I said earlier, it's a sad scene, sad look on their faces, sad music, and then, wow, this is really sad. Like, you, you didn't need to say that. Like, we get it. It's a sad scene. That this person just collapsed and had to be rushed to the hospital. We get it. Like, they're sad. They're worried about their friend. You don't need to, what is it called, exposition? Like, you don't need to sit there and give exposition in that scene. It's just. And I get it. Being anime, they have a lot of anime tropes. It's just, but it, like, it ruins the moment. Like, again, you get the, the chibi style, big headed versions of them yelling at each other in a comedy scene. I was like, oh, sad. Chibi comedy. Sad. Like, you could have had sad, then, oh, let's try to uplift each other by telling stories of stuff that makes us happy without the chibi thing and yelling at each other anime style, and then go back to sad when, like, the telling the, oh, remember the time we jumped off this bridge and you were so worried, but it wasn't actually that deep? Like, you could stand up and you had to be above water, just do a cannonball, yay, have fun. But you're like, what if my, my mom's gonna hit, what, what's your mom gonna do? Uh, uh. Never mind. I'll just jump. Yay! Oh, did I forget to tell I don't know how to swim? And it's like, no. It's like, oh, wow, well, that was a good time. Yeah, I remember that day. That was so much fun. But then, like, they do it, like, chibi and yelling. It's, it's just... <sighs> like, how are you going to do... Oh, yeah, here's a traumatic child abuse scene. And him, like, hey, yeah, this abuse really traumatized me. And then, chibi style, yay! Like, it just... Like, they don't flow well together. And then there's another side plot where... Oh, it's to teach him to learn his love for music again. Isn't that the... Literally the main plot of the story? The main plot of the story is... That, uh... The violinist is trying to teach him... How to love music again. How to be able to play it again. Like you don't need a side story with someone else to teach him to love music again. Because that's what Kaori is doing. Like that's the whole point of her character. This show bounces around a lot. Again, from like serious, funny, serious, anime trope, anime trope, serious, sad, anime trope, chibi. Had to have multiple love triangles, a couple plot lines that don't make sense, and the fact that, like, oh, hey, the plot line to teach him this. But we already had a plot line teaching him that. Why do we need to have two of them teaching him that? Like, again, I think they were told, we need 22 episodes. We don't have enough material for 22 episodes. We need 22 episodes. All right, well then, we're going to pad this shit out. If you cut out the side stuff and, like, the dissonance... I'm trying to think of the word for it. It's like how they just don't mesh for some of the scenes. And cut out the oh, half a dozen filler episodes and flashback scenes. Eh. If you had been, like, 12 episodes, easily could have been a 9 out of 10. But with the fillers, with... The dragging it out with the padding, with the like, just things not meshing together. It is still good, and like, oh, read or oh, watch this because like you like the reviews like because trying to figure out what I want to watch on Netflix lately. I've been doing uh setting a timer for five minutes. If I don't choose by the time five minutes up, alarm goes off. Whatever I'm on, click. That's what I'm watching. Like, oh, let's see, what's this about? Read somebody, oh, it's so heartwarming, oh, I'm gonna help it cry at the end, and it's like, and I mean, again, they try to tug at your heartstrings, try to get you to cry, but it just, 
doesn't, at least for me, just didn't do it for me because like, yay, happy chibi moment. And then sad chibi traumatic scene flashback of his mom beating him chibi like we made this a darker more serious tone the whole way through with a little bit lightheartedness like them trying to tell the story of oh remember this day when we we finally convinced you to jump off the bridge with us to go swimming and then we found out you didn't know how to swim because your mom spent so much time teaching you how to play piano you never learned how to swim we all freaked out until we realized oh just stand up <laughs> Like, that would have been great of them, like, trying to lighten the mood with a story like that. After something happens and they're all feeling down. But just have them sit there, the sad music, settling the face going, wow, this is really sad. It just doesn't work for me. It's still good. I still think you should watch it. Just don't be going in expecting tears. Ah, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. And the animation is pretty good. They do reuse some scenes. But, hey. What do you think they do in regular TV shows? Like, did, did anyone give a uh, Big Bang Theory shit for, wow, oh, they use the same living room scene over and over. Well, yeah, it's a set. They built the set. And then they used it. So I don't get why people bitch about, oh, they reuse the same, an like, the same scenes over and over. It's like, well, they're going to the same school that they go to. So it makes sense that they would reuse the same school scene. Like it I don't I've never really gotten that point. Wow. They're reusing the same scene from the spaceship over and over again. Was well, the same spaceship? Yeah. Then it would make sense that they would use the same animation from the spaceship. I'm just getting off on a tangent. Let you guys go. But yeah, check it out. As it is, seven out of ten. Cut out the padding and the filler 9 out of 10 with that though i'll let you go thank you for watching as always like subscribe comment down below and have one hell of a day